Hey friends, what's up? Today I want to talk about how you can combine Tailwind and regular CSS to create Chadwind. And this is just something I made up, but this is how I recently been enjoying using Tailwind. People are always on the polar opposites. They either passionately hate Tailwind or they love it. Let me just tell you as someone, I really don't care or advocate that much for Tailwind. I just love to use things that make my life easier. So I'm not really dogmatic about these things. And there's things in Tailwind and regular CSS that annoy me, to be honest. And I'm actually going to talk a bit about that and how I combined Tailwind and CSS to get the best of both worlds. Alright friends, so in the past I would say something like I'm the weird person that enjoys both Tailwind and regular CSS, but there's actually nothing weird about seeing the strength and weaknesses of both, right? And I love Tailwind for a lot of things. For example, the first class editor support, you get auto completion and your editor for your utilities and etc, which is really beautiful. And CSS tooling absolutely sucks. No, I'm not talking about the developer tools, which are awesome. I'm talking about your editor. For example, you can have classes and other things that you make your own custom utility. Let's say if you're not using Tailwind, but your editor has no idea about those things. Yeah, maybe you can get some weird extension, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but actually CSS tooling is surprisingly bad. One thing I don't love about Tailwind is arbitrary values, and this is one of the best and worst features they added to Tailwind in my opinion. Why is it best? Because it's super convenient. You have some random value, you can do it. But Tailwind is just trying to do too much, in my opinion, or people using Tailwind. Uh, the tool is not at blame here, right? So people are trying to recreate every possible thing that exists in CSS in Tailwind. God forbid they use a style sheet or etc. You can use both, right? This is something that people ignore in this discussion. Tailwind is just CSS. They pretend or they don't know these tools they're using, how they work, right? So I think, okay, I can just use Tailwind. I can't write a single line of regular CSS in my life ever again. So arbitrary values are something that make Tailwind way worse, in my opinion, even though the Tailwind purists, of course, love it. And before you type comment about using apply and etc, you should read the documentation first, because since day one, this is discouraged. Apply is just an escape hatch, so you can use design tokens in regular CSS. And it even says in the doc, whatever you do, don't use apply just to make things look cleaner. Yes, HTML templates literally with tailwind classes are kind of ugly. Making changes in a project that has tons of custom CSS is worse. And I kind of agree with this statement. So you shouldn't just use this to abstract things, right? And even the author of Tailwind tweeted this out years ago. Confession, the apply feature in Tailwind basically only exists to trick people who are put off by long list of classes into trying the framework. And the way I look at Tailwind is actually like this tool that can generate a CSS framework for you. And I'm actually going to show you what I mean by that, because we can take something like open props, we can plug this into Tailwind without a problem. We don't have to use their design system, their design tokens. And of course, there are some other tools like Uno CSS and etc. But I think a majority of those tools, why I don't like them, they kind of, again, do too much. And they also miss the point of Tailwind. Being limited when you're designing a site is great because you're not going to make something that looks like crap. All right, so let's look at some code. Alright friends, so here I have a simple example I took from Adam Argyle, who's the creator of Open Props, incidentally. So here I have this scheme switcher, everything looks beautifully and just works, right? So we can toggle these themes and that's it. And one of the things that annoy me with Tailwind also is using CSS variables. You can do that, but it wasn't that easy. But thankfully, Tailwind 4.0 completely embraces this and it's in alpha right now, which I'm using. So this is really awesome because now Tailwind, I think, is just a Vite plugin. So you don't need post CSS. You don't need a Tailwind config file. You just do import Tailwind CSS, of course, you need to install the package. And then this is now first class. So let me just find the example. And this works so great with the approach I've been exploring. So you can just import Tailwind CSS and now you have this layer theme. So now you can specify things using regular CSS variables. So now if you specify a color here, it's going to generate all of these variants for your color, background, focus, and etc. using regular CSS variables. This is absolutely amazing. So you can see here how we generated this text neon cyan and etc. This font family, you can read more about this. I'm going to link all of these things in the description if you want to read about it. And this is in alpha, so be careful. Uh, not everything works, of course, and there's really, they tell you how you can try it out. Let me just... If I scroll down to it, okay, they show you how you can do that. They may use post CSS if you want. So now you can see trying the alpha, you can see now Tailwind is just a CSS or V plugin. So now you can include it like this. That's it. Now we just import it. You can use post CSS like that. And yeah, that's basically it. And also if you're using the Tailwind in IntelliSense extension in VS Code, go to that extension pane and just switch to the pre-release version. So things work as expected. If you're going to use Tailwind, that is right. 
Alright friends, so let's look at the code. Again, I just took this simple example from Adam Argyle and this method works better in single file components, but if you're using React or something, you can make it work, but I'm going to show you why it's more awesome in single file components. So I'm just using Svelte 5 here. I just have this themes option and I'm using a rune here and I'm just going to update the color scheme. So let me just show you this example. If we open the developer tools, you can see color scheme auto and then when we change the theme, it's just going to change it here. That's basically it. We're just using CSS variables nothing complicated right and that's something i didn't like about tailwind before it's still the same i guess but in tailwind dark mode it works really the opposite i actually want to start in dark mode and not go from light mode to dark mode and i just want to use css variables and do it however i want that's basically the whole premise of this video you can do whatever you want so we're going to use that and let me just actually show you what i use tailwind for so i just use tailwind for these things that are actually always annoying to type out so how many times have you specified display grid margin padding etc this is something that tailwind is great at and it doesn't litter your markdown that much and of course you can say oh now i have to look at two places for my css but you don't really have to like unless you're like working with a lot of people maybe this approach doesn't work but let me tell you uh, working on these styles by myself, I actually have a blast. I'm so fast and productive doing this. And I don't have to abuse Tailwind to try to use every possible feature of CSS. So we're just looping over this value. It's really not that important. You can see I'm not using anything that advanced here. When something is starting to get a bit complicated, I just say, okay, stop Tailwind here. Let's just go to the styles. This is just an example. Maybe I wouldn't use this exactly. There's a lot of arguments from people. They want to use some grid template areas, for example, from CSS grid. They're like, oh, you can do this in Tailwind. And I'm like, brother in Christ, just use CSS. This is the dumbest complaint I've ever heard. Please just use CSS if you don't have it. Like, I don't want to advocate for telling, but when people say something devoid of logic, I just can't believe it. Just use CSS. Imagine that this is a grid template area. Okay, now I don't need to use telling for all of this junk. Let me just create this simple class in my single file components. So now this is scoped to this component. How beautiful is that? You don't even have to worry about naming or whatever. You can directly target a P class or whatever. And then I have this swatch thing here. As you can see here, you can do whatever you want. So now we can take advantage of CSS variables and let me actually show you why i love using telling for this you probably also have an argument some people well i can make my own utility classes yeah yeah you can and then when when is enough enough then you start to make a worse version of telling so for example here we can go to the styles let me just find a spot here and then maybe you're not using tail you can say for example center and this is a great thing when you're creating your utility class so you for example say display grid right and place content center so you can just say place content center and that's basically it. So now we have this awesome utility, but here's my problem. When you're using CSS, your tooling absolutely sucks. For example, if you have even 10 classes, 20 classes, you have to remember how this thing is named, right? And even if you save this, for example, and then you go back to your markup and you're like, oh, this is great. I don't need Tailwind. Ha, oh, Failwind, Smellwind. It sucks, right? And then you're like, oh, what was the name of the thing? I can, was it Center? Was it Grid Center? Or whatever and now when are you going to where are you going to put this like in the docs or whatever why do you need docs for this when the awesome first class editor support from tailwind is here right that's why i absolutely love telling for these things because you can just start typing things and it can absolutely rip for example you say bg and then you get all of the other completions so blend these colors and these colors aren't even from tailwind i override this with open props so let me show you how that works so let me just save this and i'm going to just remove this class so you're going to see this is something you can also do in Tailwind 3, but it, it's a bit harder. And let me show you how simple it is right here. So here we have this import Tailwind, that's it. And then you have this theme here. So now you can say this color asterisk. This means that to remove all the other colors that Tailwind has. And you can also strip the default theme, I think. It's in their docs, you can read about this. But I just added these props from open props right so now i'm using tailwind just as a tool to create a css framework and i'm going to get all of this awesome tooling and completion in my editor this is why it's so pointless to be dogmatic about things you're never going to learn about other more interesting things even if you hate tailwind after this it's fine that's perfectly fine with me because i don't care but i actually want you to see these things and not just listen to random people who just hate things because they hate on them Okay, so let me just really show you. So I have colors here and I've done the same for the spacing. So I define all of my custom things here. I'm just using CSS variables. How beautiful is this? And the Tailwind compiler is going to pick this up and it's going to create all of the necessary variants for this. 
and here I just created these two for the phones because I couldn't be asked to be honest I just quickly put this demo together right and here I have some radius and that's basically it so now using Adam Argyle's demo which he made for open props I can just redeclare this brand text light and etc values here and now I can use CSS variables again here at the root here we're defining some things again it's really important and then we can use the media prefers color scheme dark great now we're just going to use the css variables we didn't have to complicate our markup with things we don't care about of course you do you you're going to find a way that you enjoy of course and now we can target color scheme light color scheme dark we just need to flip the css variables and that's basically it how beautiful is this friends right and let me just show you another thing so you can see how we have these surfaces here, light, dark, and this is really cool. You can make your own custom utility classes for these elevations on your side. So you can have elevation one, two, three, four, and etc. And now you no longer need to think about it. Now you can create some helpful utility classes, right? So we can go here. I have one, for example, brand. I have surface one. So we can just slap surface one, two, three, or four on the elevation that you want, right? And this is going to take care of all of these things for you so now we make our lives so much simpler and then i have some other things here and another thing i couldn't make work right now because it's in alpha so for example you could have done something before in tailing free and etc layer utilities or components and etc and then when you would put your classes inside of here you will get also great auto completion in your editor this is something i don't think is supported yet in tailwind alpha but it's going to be and again your first class tooling editor support is going to be amazing right so now when i close this let me just show you this so when i go here to the code we can see here again our code isn't cluttered we're just using the same things that we're writing all of the time right Hey, let me just find this here where my swatches are. You can see I'm just mixing. Like, this is why Tailwind is so great because this first class editor support, you can start typing shadow. You can get all of the things here. As you can see, all of the utilities are generated for our colors. Like, this choco color, this isn't a Tailwind color. This is an open props color, but you can add your own design tokens and etc. And we can also enhance this by using regular CSS. So, we're saying here Surface 1, Surface 2, Surface 3, and Surface 4 for elevation. And we have everything set up beautifully using CSS. And now, if I save it and we can go here, we can just switch this super easy, peasy squeezy, lemon squeezy like that, boys. How beautiful is this, right? All right, friends, that's it. This was a shorter video, but I hope you took something from it. And if you still passionately hate Tailwind, then that's perfectly fine. And if you like what you've seen, don't forget to like and subscribe, and you can also support me by becoming a patron. Thank you for watching, and catch you in the next one. Peace!